Oh, hey friends. No, I'm not Jim Nance, but I am going to ask you guys to go ahead and follow me on Twitter. Let me give you guys more Broncos and NFL content all season long. My, my username is Matthew Petey. Go down, drop me a follow on Twitter so I can give you guys more content. I'm not going to hit you with breaking news and Ian Rappaport kind of stuff, but I will give you funny, well, attempting to be funny, takes on whatever's going on in the NFL every single day. Welcome into the Denver Broncos Breakdown. I'm Matthew Peterson. We've got a great show lined out for you guys today. We've got some burning questions coming at you, okay? We're going to hit you guys with three burning questions. And don't take them too seriously because they are a little fun, little Broncos rumories, all right? But just floating them out there because that's what we do on the Broncos Breakdown. We don't take ourselves too seriously. We like to have fun with you guys. So let's start with three burning questions. Question number one, do the Broncos stash Drew Locke, okay? Do they keep him or do they trade Drew Locke? I'm open to either idea at this point because there's no doubt that Teddy Bridgewater will not lose this job, meaning even if he has a bad game or two, you're not going away from him. I thought this quarterback battle will go all year long. Bridgewater proved me and a lot of people wrong. So do you hold on to Drew Locke and just let him hold the clipboard? Or do you try and move him for a piece? Well, after week two, like every year, there's already a handful of quarterbacks pretty banged up. And it sucks, but it's the reality of the NFL. So I outlined three quarterbacks that... And they may not be on IR, but they are not in a good spot here. So Carson Wentz, just put him in bubble wrap already, all right? He uh, sprained both his ankles. I don't know how he did that. And then Tua fractured his ribs, and Jacoby Brissett failed to score a single point against the Bills coming in off the bench. Surprise, surprise, Big Ben Roethlisberger, he can hardly walk. He tore, uh, not tore, scratch that from the record. He injured his left pec. Don't really know how serious it is. Ryan Fitzpatrick, he has a serious injury. That's a hip injury. He's going to miss some time. So Taylor Heineke, he's the backup. Don't know what's going well, on. He's the starter now. Don't know what the new backup is. And then Baker Mayfield that put on here, I don't think he's going to miss any time. But he did basically dislocate his shoulder. He said it kind of popped in and out. So to me, that's a dislocation, and there's not a lot of trust in backup Case Keenum. So these are five quarterbacks that are either banged up on the way to IR or just not confident in being healthy for the whole season. And these are five teams that are all competing, okay? They're not throw-away-the-season kind of teams. All of these teams either made the playoffs last year or are very optimistic about making it this year. So they could look for someone like Drew Locke to just steer the ship, keep the ship afloat for a couple of weeks if their starter needs a little bit more time to get to 100%. So... I'm going to let you guys be the GM here. Would you trade Drew Locke for a day three draft pick? All right, day three means rounds four, five, six, and seven. You picked him with a second note with a second round pick. You're already punting on this. Would you trade him for a day three? All right, I'm not going to even entertain the idea of a, one, a first, a second, or a third round pick because obviously you take that. Type T for trade or P for pass. Let me know what you would do. Be the GM down in the comments. Broncos fans, go ahead and subscribe right now to the Broncos Breakdown. The stupid Raiders channel here keeps, t frankly, talking shit, all right? So we got to step our game up. Let's get some subscriptions rolling. Go ahead, subscribe right now to the best Broncos coverage all season long. We're going to hit you guys with the news, rumors. We're going to be entertaining and informative. Subscribe today to the Broncos Breakdown. Burning question number two. Is the AFC West the best division in the NFL? Well, after two weeks, they're right up there. If it's not them, it's the NFC West. All together, go west of the Mississippi for good football right now. All right, look at the standings and the records here of all the AFC West teams. 2-0, and you got the Raiders and the Broncos. I don't know many people that saw these two teams being ahead of the Chiefs at this point, but the Chargers look competitive. They came down to a walk-off field goal against Dallas, who you just kind of felt like Dallas really needed a win. They couldn't start 0-2. And then the Chiefs, you can just guarantee they're going to turn around from that Ravens loss and, I don't know, beat the crap out of whoever's coming next. I, who's, who are the Chiefs playing this week? 
I'll, it'll, it's escaping me. It'll come back to me later. But yeah, these are the AFC. If it's not the AFC West, the NFC West, they only have one loss altogether as a division. So. Uh, I, I, oh, the Chiefs are playing the Chargers this week, I think, actually. So that's why I couldn't think of it. But, yeah, NFC West, AFC West. I think the A uh, AFC North is also sneaky good this year. But you can definitely make an argument for the AFC West with you got the heavyweights like the Chiefs. And the Broncos and the Raiders and the Chargers are all teams that, in my opinion, are going to finish probably higher than uh, more than seven wins, okay? If someone only gets to seven wins, it's because they had to play six games against really good teams in their division. So here's what my playoff take is, though. The division record will determine a wild card spot, all right? If one of these teams goes two and four in the division, it's just not going to be good enough to snag one of three wild card spots. Now, it is crazy that all four teams can make the playoffs under the new playoff structure. Never before happened the first year, but it wouldn't blow my mind if the AFC West or the NFC West was able to do it. I really have a lot of doubts, though, about the Raiders. I think they just crumble, as always, in the second half of the season under Gruden. So I just don't have a ton of faith right there, but we'll find out. Broncos fans, BetUS, our sportsbook partner, has a great deal lined up for you guys. Super simple. Use the link at the bottom of your screen, chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Broncos125, and they hook you guys up with a 125% deposit bonus. You heard me say it before, if you're new to the show, the way it works is basically if you were to put $100 in, they're going to give you an additional $125. That's $225 altogether. The Broncos have covered through two weeks. The Unders have hit in both those games. And they're like last I checked, 10.5 point favorites at home against the Jets. I am gassing that bad boy right there. There's no way the Jets can put up that many points and try and keep it close with Denver on the road. No way. Not happening, especially with the first Broncos home game with fans, an actual regular season game in quite some time. So check them out. BetUS, chatsports.com slash bet. Broncos 125. Final burning question of the show. Will Teddy become more than a rental? So here's the deal. Bridgewater has been fantastic through two weeks of the year. It's only been two weeks, but why not overreact a little bit because it's a lot of fun. All right, it's more fun than being a Debbie Downer and pessimistic. However, he is on a one-year contract, so he's going to get signed somewhere after this. It'll be curious if Denver wants to make him the long-term guy or at least a medium-term guy, but what will it take? This is an open-ended question because I don't know the answer. I really don't. Will it take a playoff appearance, a playoff win, great numbers? What will it take for Bridgewater to lock down a future in Denver? I mean, look at the numbers through two games so far. I've said it before. I don't know which of these four stats I'm the most impressed with. Is it the high completion percentage? The fact that he hasn't turned the ball over? There's a lot to be happy with here, especially after coming off a 15 interception season last year. So my question for you guys, what does Teddy have to do? Really, I I'm curious. What does he have to do to solidify himself in Denver? Because there's still those trade rumors out there of Aaron Rodgers. Because it's very clear that, that Rodgers is going to be out of Green Bay next year. And Denver was one of the favorites during the offseason to get him. Can Bridgewater play himself into a spot where that question is removed? And GM George Payton goes, yeah, I'd love to have Bridgewater and not lose three to four first-round picks for Rodgers. I have no idea. There's a lot of football left, so we'll stop there. But let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. What does Teddy have to do to stay in Denver for a long term?